Today's read aloud is called Dad, Jackie, and Me. Written by Myron Ulberg. Illustrated by Colin Bootman. My ear was glued to the radio, like every other ear in Brooklyn. It was opening day, 1947, and every kid in Brooklyn knew this was our year. The Dodgers were going to go all the way. We had Jackie Robinson, the first Negro player in Major League Baseball. As I listened to the game, the minutes melted into hours. The innings folded one into another. I could see it all in my mind's eye, pitch after pitch swing after swing. I dreamed of the day I could see it all for myself. Our neighborhood was only a short subway ride from Ebbets Field, home of the Dodgers and their new first baseman. I loved baseball. I loved the Brooklyn Dodgers. I hated the New York Giants and they hated Jackie Robinson. One day, my father came home early from work. He walked into my bedroom and announced, we're going to Ebbets Field. He didn't say it out loud. My father was deaf, so he signed the words with his hands. I couldn't believe it. Dad had never seemed to care much about baseball. I want to meet Jackie Robinson, Dad signed. I was finally going to see a real game. Today, the Dodgers were playing the Giants, and we were going to cream them. I got my glove and ball, Dodgers cap, and scorecard. I stuck my lucky pencil behind my ear. As we went down the steps, I tossed the ball to Dad, but he never played baseball like me. He dropped it. I couldn't wait to get to the ballpark, but the whole ride, I kept thinking, there's no way Dad can meet Jackie Robinson. Besides, Jackie doesn't know sign language. How would they talk to each other? The line to get into Ebbets Field snaked around Sullivan Place and up to Bedford Avenue. My dad let me hold my ticket. I clutched it for dear life. Finally, we went through the turnstile. My dad held my hand as we moved with the rest of the crowd through the gloomy and underbelly of the stadium, up the dark ramp. Then, we tumbled into bright sunlight. I shut my eyes against the glare. When I opened them again, my breath caught in my throat. I had never seen anything so perfect as the inside of Ebbets Field. There, laid out at my feet, was the emerald green field, each blade of grass reflecting the light from the afternoon sun. The angles of the field were sharply marked in two lines of white chalk. The dirt base paths formed a perfect diamond, carpet dotted and fat canvas bags at each base, and a black rubber plate at home. I knew if I lived to be a hundred, I would never again see a sight so beautiful. Hey peanuts! Hey hot dogs! Get them while they're hot! Dad and I sat on the right field line, right behind first base, Jackie's position. The Dodgers symphony was marching up and down the aisles playing. The worms crawl in, the worms crawl out. The music was ear splitting. Dad couldn't hear it, but he laughed along with everyone else at the sight of the raggedies bands, tattered clothes, cowbells, and whistles. When the game started and Jackie ran out on the field, Dad yelled real loud, Jackie! 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 Only it didn't come out that way. It sounded like, Augie! 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 Since my dad couldn't hear, he had no way of knowing what the words should sound like. Everyone looked at my dad. I looked at my shoes. 
As Jackie stood at first base, the Giants began hooting and hollering. They called Jackie names. Horrible names. What are they saying? Dad asked. Bad things, I said. Tell me. Some of those words, I had to fingerspell. I knew no sign for them. Dad listened with a sad little smile on his face. In the ninth inning, Jackie bunted and beat the throw to first. Then he stole second. On the next Dodgers hit, he moved to third. The score was tied at four all. The Giants pitcher took a long windup and Jackie dashed for home. We all jumped to our feet yelling, Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. Augie, 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 Dad screamed. This time, nobody seemed to notice. The heck with the Giants. They were nothing. We had Jackie Robinson. Every day when Dad came home from work, he started asking me questions. Not about school. About baseball. He wanted to know everything I knew. Especially about Jackie Robinson. What's Jackie's batting average? 0.247, I said. How's that figure? I explained. What's an RBI? He asked. Runs batted in? Field averaging? What's that mean? I told him. You teach me baseball, he signed. Okay, I said. One night, Dad came home with a baseball glove. Let's have a catch, he signed. We tossed the ball back and forth until Mom called us for supper. Dad missed the ball every time. The only way he could hold it was by trapping the ball against his chest with both hands. That had to hurt, but Dad just smiled. Jackie never drops the ball, he signed. He catches it with one hand, not like me. All that week, we practiced. Dad dropped the ball most every time, even when I threw it underhand. Throw it regular, Dad said. Dad and I kept going to games whenever we could. Every time Jackie came out to his position, Dad chanted right along with the crowd, Augie, Augie, Augie. Jackie never looked over at us. He just stared down the line at the next hitter. One Sunday, the Dodgers were playing the St. Louis Cardinals. What a game! Our pitcher had a no-hitter going. And then it happened. On a simple grounder that he knew he couldn't beat, a Cardinal player crossed first base and spiked Jackie on purpose. 52,000 eyes popped. 26,000 jaws dropped. 26,000 tongues were stilled. Then, in that awful silence, my father jumped to his feet. No! He screamed. Not fair! Augie! 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 The Brooklyn crowd went nuts. They leapt to their feet and joined my father. Jackie! 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 The name bounced off the brick walls, climbed the iron girders, and rattled around under the wooden roof. But Jackie just stood at first base, his face a blank mask, blood streaming down his leg. It was almost as if he didn't hear the crowd. All that month, Dad and I followed everything Jackie did. We read and reread every report of every game that was printed in the New York Daily News. Dad started a scrapbook. If there was any mention of Jackie Robinson, he cut out the article and pasted it in his scrapbook. The scrapbook got thicker. The Dodgers kept winning, and the opposing teams kept writing Jackie Robinson. But Jackie never reacted. He didn't even seem to notice. And he never complained. The Dodgers clinched the pennant that season when the Cards beat the Cubs. Dad and I went downtown the next day 
to see the big parade to honor Jackie. And back in the neighborhood, we had a block party to celebrate. It didn't matter whether the Dodgers won the last game of the season, since we were already over the top, but Dad and I didn't care. We went to Ebbets Field anyway. We went to see Jackie Robinson. In the third inning, Jackie smacked the ball to deep left field for a double. Then he flew home like the wind, his feet barely touching the base path. The Brooklyn crowd went crazy. Go, 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 Jackie! Go, 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 Augie! My dad screamed right along with them. Finally, late in the day, as deep shadows stretched across the infield, Jackie caught a line drive hit down the first baseline. It was the last out of the game. As the crowd cheered, Jackie stood alone at first base, staring at the ball in his glove. Then he turned and threw it into the stands, right to my father. That's when my dad did something he had never done before. He reached up and caught the ball in his bare hand. I'm not sure, but I think I saw Jackie Robinson smile. My dad dropped the ball into my empty glove. And just like that, the baseball season of 1947 was over. <laughs>